Hey guys, welcome back to Kelly's Creations. I'm so glad you're here. We're going to do a tips and tricks video. Some of these I've seen on YouTube, some I've done for myself, and some I got off of TikTok. So number one is glue embellishments. So these two silicone trays I got from Walmart in the cake and candy section. So I'm assuming these are like, that one is probably to decorate cakes. The other one is for candy because they're a lot deeper. But I wanted to try the, oh, these are some silicones that I got off Amazon. I'm so excited to do an air dry clay video next weekend. So come back next Sunday for that one. Back to this. <laughs> I thought... I would try what I saw on TikTok of filling these silicone little molds with hot glue to see if I could get hot glue embellishments. And it is actually a lot of fun filling these. <laughs> it probably takes about a glue stick to do it, but I put it in there and I kind of just slammed it on my table to make sure the air bubbles weren't there and that they were that it was filling in the mold properly. I'm trying to speak and that seems to work. So let it dry, <laughs> let it cool down. Don't be like too quick to pull these out. You'll see it's cool because it'll be like a cloudy um, color instead of clear. What's best about these, this is, it turned out for one thing, but you can paint these. Now granted, I did not paint this flower very well. I was kind of rushing and kind of just grabbed a bunch of different colors and slapped them on here. I basically wasn't trying to make the perfect flower as much as seeing how well the paint would cover on this little um, hot glue stick flower. And yeah, I got a little messy. I got a little carried away with the yellow, didn't I? But they worked and they're really cute. And if you want a quick and easy embellishment, this works. You can see the details. There's the little leaves. You can see the details in the flowers. This actually is a pretty cool trick. So the orange tray was at Walmart for like $9.99. And the other one I think was only $2.00. Now, number two, glue stick trick. I see tons of people on YouTube do this. So when you're adding your next glue stick into your glue gun, add a little hot glue to the back of it, put it in your glue gun, and it will glue itself to the existing hot glue stick in the glue gun. And that way it will slide on through. You won't have a gap. Anybody who uses a hot glue gun knows sometimes you get that gap where you have to push your glue stick in further. Number three, sawdust and glue. I've showed you guys this trick before. and Actually, my husband taught me it. So I'm going to use two Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree. I'm going to put a little wood glue on them to put them together so I can show you the gap. And as you can see, it's not flush. You can see where the two uh, Jenga blocks are put together. Yes, I am using a baby wipe to remove the excess glue because I basically always have baby wipes, which goes to trick or tip. This would be a tip, number four, <laughs> baby wipes. <laughs> I always have a package of baby wipes in my desk. Baby wipes are great for cleaning your hands, of course, because if you're messy like me, you get paint all over your hands. And to my loyal subscribers, how many times do you see paint on my hands? Hardly ever because I have baby wipes in my drawer. <laughs> but they're great for cleaning your table up, getting, you know, extra paint, anything that you might spill. They're great. They're great for staining. Baby wipes can be used for quite a few things when you're crafting. If you get too much paint on the item, they're also great for rubbing it off. So let's get back to number three, the sawdust and glue. When you're sanding down an item, and again, this would be more for a bigger wood project, um, not like two little chunk of pieces. <laughs> Keep your sawdust. I always have a little glass of sawdust in or on my shelf. You put some wood glue down, you add a little sawdust to it. Now this trick works better if the sawdust came from your item 
that sawdust that was in my cup was actually from another project. So I noticed it didn't fill in the gap as well as if it would have been the sawdust from this, okay? But you don't get too much sawdust with two Jenga blocks. <laughs> so I am gonna show you though, I did use Jenga blocks to make this. This is not a store-bought Dollar Tree home sign. This is one I actually made myself because I showed in a video how to take Jenga blocks and recreate this house because nobody was finding them at theirs. Now you can see the back, you can see every line, but the front, not so much because I used that sawdust trick. If you want to see this video, I will post that up above on a card. And if you're interested, you can click on that to watch that video. Number five, mini heat press decoupage. I finally got my little mini heat press. Oh my gosh, I love it. I absolutely love it. I will have it in the description box if you want to click on the link to check it out. Um, of course, you do not have to buy one. It's just a handy dandy little link I have down there in case you want to go to Amazon just to check it out. So I absolutely love this little mini heat press. It is so cute. And I got it in pink because pink was my daughter's favorite color. Comes with a cute little bag and a water, little water bottle. Comes with a base that it sits in and you just plug it in and wait for it to heat up. Now I saw this little hack on TikTok and I've been dying to try it. So these are Pioneer Woman napkins from Walmart and they're beautiful and I've been using them in so many projects because I just am in love with floral. Then you're gonna need some cling wrap. This is just generic brand cling wrap and you're gonna need some wax paper. Now, you're supposed to be able to put the, whatever you're using to decoupage, which I'm using napkins, you're supposed to be able to cut it out to size and then put the cling wrap underneath it and put wax paper on top of it and you're supposed to be able to iron it on. So I had to try this because if you watch my videos, you know me and Mod Podge don't get along. <laughs> we just don't. We have a love-hate relationship and I tend to hate it more than I love it. So I thought if this worked, oh, this is a game changer. So like I said, put the saran wrap down, put whatever you're using the decoupage on top of it, and then wax paper. Now, I'm impatient. I probably just wasn't having my little mini heat press stay in one spot long enough. I kind of was moving it around. So with me being impatient, the first time it didn't exactly work. You need to keep your heat press in one area. Here's a tip within the trick here. You also need to break your napkin down. If you're using a napkin and if it's two or three ply, you need to take the extra plies off. You can dip your finger in glue or Mod Podge and rub it on the napkin together until they separate. You just want a one ply napkin and that would have worked a lot better for this. And I forgot that step. <laughs> so the wax paper was kind of moving with my heat press. <laughs> so I just ran with it. And what the wax paper does is so you're not ripping whatever you're using to decoupage, you know, it's keeping it a barrier between that and your piece so you don't burn it or rip it. And it was kind of just following me around with my heat press. <laughs> so then I got smart. I cut the wax paper down to size and I just used a little bitty piece of it underneath my heat press and I slowed down. I stopped being so impatient. I mean, even when you're ironing, you don't iron a shirt in two seconds, right? <laughs> it takes a little time. So I made myself a little bitty piece of wax paper and I just kept going over and over the piece until it actually did fuse together. And this little trick works. This was really cool that it worked. I kind of, I don't know, you know, I watch TikTok like everybody else and some of the stuff is like, mm, I'm not sure if that really works or if they just are very, very good at editing. 
But this worked. It fused it together. And then all you have to do is trim off the excess and sand the edges. And I don't know, I have a love-hate relationship with Mod Podge, so I might be using this little trick more often than not. So once you got it trimmed down, take sandpaper. I'm using a sanding disc and you can actually sand through, you know, what you used to decoupage, but through the saran wrap as well. As you can see, it's just coming off in a little line. So it's actually sanding them both and you got a nice clean um, effect on the side of your piece. And look at that. Pretty cool. Not a lot of wrinkles. I'm actually loving this trick. Number six, straight lines. We all struggle with straight lines. I know I really struggle with straight lines. So I saw this tip on YouTube by Caitlin from Crafts by Caitlin. She puts her painter's tape down and then she takes some Mod Podge and she paints some Mod Podge over um, the edge of her painter's tape. Now, I don't know why I'm just like, everything I do is an excess. <laughs> this is too much. You don't need that much Mod Podge. You also don't need to paint on the tape. You only have to paint where the tape meets the wood. <laughs> You're just going for a clean line here. That's all. I'm here. I'm painting the tape, everything else. You don't have to do that. Just paint the line. And then take whatever paint you're going to use. You can use chalk paint. You can use acrylic. I'm using chalk paint. And let that Mod Podge dry a little bit. And then come in with, like I said, whatever paint you're going to use. And paint that area. Now, normally, without the Mod Podge, when Mod Podge, when you remove the tape, you'd see a little bleeding. But with the Mod Podge, when you remove that tape, you have the most clear crisp line ever look how beautiful that is now this is a great tip thank you caitlin you're always giving us wonderful tips and i really appreciate this one number seven heat gun or hair dryer i've used both guys i started my channel with a hair dryer <laughs> it works it works the heat gun works quicker so it also sets off my smoke alarm. <laughs> it does. But you know what? Anything sets off my smoke alarm. <laughs> um, but yeah, heat guns are awesome. You paint, especially for us who are filming, it really saves time. And it makes the paint dry so fast. It also removes those pesky Dollar Tree stickum stickers that are on the back of almost everything that they sell. <laughs> it also removes stickers off of glass. So, but hair dryer does the same thing. So you don't have to go out and buy a heat gun. Um, I've used both, and it's just the hair dryer takes a little bit longer. That's all I've really noticed, really, for a difference. Um, you get it warm and I know it doesn't look like it comes off any easier right now. <laughs> That's me struggling with my nails more than the sticker. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would still be ripping little strands of this paper off without the heat gun. With the heat gun, it comes off pretty clean. And then you can always take alcohol or nail polish remover and get the little residue off. And pretty cool. Number eight, textured paint. Now, I came across this last year, and a lot of people are doing this. YouTube, TikTok, like Instagram, it's all over the net. <laughs> so you take some baking soda, and you add paint to it. I'm adding some Valspar white chalk paint to my baking soda, and then just mix it up. The consistency is up to you. If you are doing a project where you really want it to look like stucco, um, make it thicker. You want it to look like concrete, make it thicker. What's great about this is you can also add color. Here's another tip inside the trick. These little spoons from Dollar Tree. They're in the wedding section. You get a gazillion little spoons for a dollar, okay? <laughs> not a gazillion. I'm just not sure how many are in the package. But you get a lot. 
and they're perfect for stirring. I keep these in a little pill bottle on my table all the time. They also clean up really good, so it's not a one-time use. After you're done stirring, wash them up. You can get so many uses out of these. So, I mean, there's not a bigger bane for your buck than these little spoons in the wedding section at Dollar Tree. So, like I said, it's up to you how thick you want it. Get the consistency you want, and you can actually add color to it. So, this doesn't have to be white. Um, Afterwards, I went in, I grabbed some more chalk paint, and I added a gray to it. And perfect. I mean, you can make it any color you want. But I love how you can do different techniques with this thicker textured paint. So it's really, really fun to play with too, guys. Okay, so I did already use the Mod Podge trick to get my clean line. And you can see the thickness of this paint as you put it down. And when I said it's fun because you can do different textures, you can pat it like this, kind of gives like a stucco look. You can put a layer down, get a pretty decent thick layer down, and you can come back in and do a swirly motion. You get a totally different look. Yeah, or you could come back in, put a nice thick layer down, and just go back and forth. Um, I love using textured paint. I think it really makes certain areas of a project stand out. It's so easy to do, and it's a great little technique when you're painting. Of course, the Mod Podge trick work, you have a perfectly straight line. And look at the difference between the regular chalk paint and the textured paint. So much fun, and I just love using it on different projects. All right, moving on to number nine, Fire Decoupage. This is my favorite, most fun trick I am going to show you today. So using Mod Podge, using a napkin, and using this home sign from Dollar Tree, we are going to try the trick where you set it on fire and it kind of just burns all around your project and you don't have to sand. Now, I was skeptical, but I love playing with fire. <laughs> I love DIYing. And if I can put the two together, you guys have heard me set off my smoke alarm before, which I did do here too, but I actually cut the sound out. So you're not going to hear my smoke alarm go off this time, but it did go off. <laughs> And always, guys, you always have to be careful when you're using fire. I don't think I have to tell you this, but I'm going to. Please, just be careful. Um, make sure you got a cup of water sitting by you, fire extinguisher, <laughs> whatever you need. Just please be careful. So what you do is you put the Mod Podge down where you want the decoupage. The only part I messed up on was the corner of the H. I didn't have enough Mod Podge down, um, so it didn't work just in that corner. Then you're going to separate the plies of your napkin if you're using a napkin, and you're going to push down, and you're going to make sure that the napkin is secure onto the piece with the Mod Podge. Okay, now the fun part. Then you take a lighter and light a corner. And this is so stinking cool. <laughs> I had my doubts if this was going to work. But look at this. I am showing you guys in real time. This is not sped up. This is not slowed down. This is this beauty in motion right now. And it will burn where the edges of this piece are. And it will go, it'll put itself out when it gets, you know, done, when it gets to the edge. And look at that. It comes all the way around because I don't have Mod Podge there. It comes all the way to where I did and we're done. Now to do the little circles in the center, I just set the little circle on fire and it burnt all around the circle. So you're not having to try to get your hands in the center um, with sandpaper and really get around this. I mean, this is pretty awesome and I, I had so much fun doing that one so number 10 pool noodle tray you can get these little 
um, baskets from Dollar Tree and, and almost everywhere sells pool noodles from Walmart to Dollar General to Dollar Tree. Um, I had one on handy actually because I use them for crafting. But this is a great jar holder for when you're DIYing. You just take the basket, take the pool noodle, measure it down, just cut the pool noodle. Ah, it's like a tongue twister. Pool noodle down to size. <laughs> I put the two together and just made one final cut so that they were both the same size. And then you cut down the center of the noodle, not cutting all the way through. You're just cutting down the center, one half of it, okay? Now you put each of those pieces on the side of the basket and I actually put some wax paper down in the basket because if I'm going to be painting on this, um, it'll catch the paint and I can just throw the wax paper away and then my basket isn't constantly needing to be cleaned. So yeah, you can maneuver this for whatever size bottle or project you're working on because the basket bends. And then you just set your jar in the middle of this. And this is a great little station to decoupage, to paint, whatever you want to do. Pretty neat. Number 11, decoupage jar napkin. I've been really using napkins a lot lately. They're affordable um, and I'm really loving decoupage lately, probably because I'm into a floral kick. So I'm loving like, I'm just got spring fever, guys. I guess that's it. I'm loving flowers and floral and just getting into it. So you just, this is just an old coffee, um, probably an old Starbucks coffee. And I cleaned it down with nail polish remover. And I'm going to use my chalk paint and I'm going to go over the jar. You're going to want to use a sponge brush for this and padding motions because if you use a regular paintbrush, you're going to get lines. So it's best to grab a package of these from Dollar Tree and I think you get three or four in a package. But this is probably the better effect that you get on glass is by just dabbing it on. And I think I only did one coat because it really doesn't take much to cover. Now these fun little napkins have ice cream cones on them. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. They're from Walmart. You want to separate the plies because this works better if it's one ply. So I just cut out a little square off the napkin, dip my finger in some glue, rub my two fingers together to separate them, and ripped them apart. Um, You'll see that by removing that extra ply of the napkin, it helps it, bl I think it helps it blend in with the bottle a lot better too than if you used, I'm sure you can do it with both, but it just helps blend it in better. Then dip your paintbrush in some water and go around the edges of where you want it to rip. Um, just be careful because with it being a napkin, of course, it's going to saturate so it's going to, the water's going to soak a little further. So it'll work fast. <laughs> Dip it in water and then just rip. Don't try to do the whole thing at one time because it's just going to keep going and then you're going to end up ripping where you don't want it. But by doing this, when you put it on your jar, it just blends in. So I've seen lots of people do this. Um, I, I can't credit one person because I've seen a lot of people do this, but then I just dip my paintbrush in water and dip it in some Mod Podge, and then I put it on trying to not have it be wrinkly. Like I said, my love-hate relationship with Mod Podge, I always get wrinkles, and I try not to, but it just doesn't like me. So we have wrinkles. That's all right. You know, I, it's, I've come to it not bothering me. I just am under the realization that every piece I do is going to be wrinkly. <laughs> Add a little Mod Podge to the back. Make sure all of your little corners and edges have Mod Podge on them. And then you can add it to the sides. 
Now, I have watched people take wax paper and put it over the project, and you can use your finger and try to smooth out a lot of those wrinkles. This worked. Now, this made me happy because I just got done telling you guys that I've kind of just chalked it up to my projects will be wrinkly. But with the wax paper, it wasn't as wrinkly. It really did work. I've also seen people put wax paper down and use like a wet rag over it to try to smooth out the wrinkles too. Anybody who does decoupage knows if you were to do it without the wax paper, you'd probably rip what you just put down. So look at that. Not bad. Not too many wrinklies. Number 12, decoupage using printer paper. This is a neat trick because I use printer paper a lot. I've just gotten on the napkin kick, but before I always used printer paper and it wasn't the same because the paper's thicker than a napkin, okay? But if you get this brown paint, or brown paint, <laughs> brown tape. <laughs> I got it at Walmart. Put it down. Gently pull it back. Be real gentle. You actually are removing a layer of paper. Look how much thinner it looks. You can almost see through it. So wherever you want to deck, whatever, however big you're using is how much, you know, you're going to have to remove from the back. Um, and then again, just set your tape down gently pull back and it removes that back layer of paper which makes this really thin and really easy to do decoupage with so this was a great tip because now I'm like infatuated with it and now I don't always have to find different pattern napkins because I love google images and I love finding non-copyrighted images just to be able to print out and use on my DIYs. Right there, you can see the difference. You can see where I ripped the back off and where I didn't. Much thinner, almost see-through. And then do it the same way you would normally decoupage. Cut it out. Use Mod Podge or you can use Elmer's glue and water. I even put the um, paintbrush, dipped it in water and went around the edges with the printer paper as well. To get it to blend in just a little bit more that works because it's so thin um i don't know if this trick would work if we kept the back layer on i just don't think it would sink in as much um i didn't try that though i think this worked because we took or i took the back layer off but that would be interesting i might go back and see if the brush in the water trick works with the paper being intact. So take your Mod Podge again, just like you do with the napkin, put it on the back and Mod Podge your printer paper down. You can also use wax paper for this as well. The difference between napkins and printer paper is the ink tends to run. Um, you really gotta be careful how much Mod Podge you put down because once you get it wet, it basically looks like a water painting. <laughs> instead of like your original image which isn't necessarily bad guys I've done projects where I've messed up I got it too wet it looked like a water painting but it was still cute <laughs> so you can use the wax paper trick like I said you can get the wrinklies out and I love this I will be using this tape um on more projects with my printer paper look how pretty that is so cute that's the paper, and the other side of it was the napkins. So 13, distressing with wax. This is funny because, like, I'm so behind in the times and late to the party because I know a lot of people do this. But you know what? If you're behind the times and late to the party like me, then you've never seen this before. My good friend Teresa at Our Green Acres does this all the time, and that's probably where I've seen it. And... You just take wax and I actually took a votive candle that I had and I'm just rubbing the, the wax candle on the edges, okay? And then you paint over it, real easy. 
So wherever you want your distressing to be, you put the candle wax, okay? And continue to paint. Now I'm coming in, now you can use an old credit card or I'm using my paint pampered chef scraper um for like getting stuff off your pots and pans i had two of them so one's in my craft room now but once your paint dries you just come in with your scraper and scrape where you put the wax and you don't ha it looks distressed it looks old it looks vintage and you're not using sandpaper and i really 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 like this technique Sometimes I get a little crazy with my sandpaper and I end up sanding too much or I end up getting lines in my paint because I had my sandpaper touch where I didn't want it. So using this technique, it's only going to distress where you had the wax. You're basically right now scraping the wax off and you get a really, really nice distressed look when it's done. Look how pretty that is. Oh my goodness, I love this. It doesn't look like a forced distressing, it just looks natural. And here is those glue embellishments I did at the beginning of the video. And I thought this little pretty green floral would look so pretty on this piece. And I added the leaves as well. What's great about a glue embellishment, you add a little hot glue to the back of it and it glues right down. <laughs> so here is three little tips and tricks in this piece. The glue embellishment, the set and fire decoupage, and the wax distressing. And look what a pretty piece we end up with. I absolutely love this home sign. I hope you do as well. Number 14, hangers. Now, I've seen multiple people on YouTube do multiple hangers. Um, really, it's personal preference what you want to use. You can always buy the little wall hangers that come in the packages. I don't think they're too expensive. Sometimes on Dollar Tree items, though, it's not thick enough to use one of those. So, pop tops off of soda cans work perfect if you save your pop tops they make great hangers and all you have to do is take it bend it just a little bit okay and hot glue it down and you have the perfect little wall hanger <clears throat> excuse me um you don't want to hang any you know a project too heavy something like this that doesn't have anything else on it making it heavier is perfect you just take your hard glue gun and just glue that pop top down and let it sit and dry you got the perfect little hanger now granted you know this is just a wooden plaque i think even if you had a little bit of floor on it it would be fine you just don't want anything too heavy for the pop top trick okay so the next trick is just using twine or yarn or string, whatever you have on hand, measure it, cut it down to size, take your hot glue gun and add hot glue to each end. And then just take a painter's tape and put it over those um, two ends that you hot glued. The painter's tape is going to seal and fuse with that hot glue to your piece. And this actually can hold a little bit of weight. I've done big signs um, with florals and just um, ribbon and heavier projects. And I've used this trick many, many, many times. And nothing has fallen off the wall yet. <laughs> so it's a great trick. Holly from Hot Humble Pie is probably the first person I saw do this, and I absolutely love this trick. Number 15, silicone tool. A lot of people ask me where I got this little baby from. Of course, I got it from Dollar Tree in the makeup aisle, and this is a game changer. This stopped me from third degree burns on my fingers <laughs> multiple, multiple times. <laughs> so it's amazing the hot glue does not stick to the silicone put your hot glue down you use your little makeup tool to smooth it out once it dries on the makeup tool you can just pull it right off so yeah i have a couple of these and it's amazing so 
there's my little hanger trick. There's two different kinds, two different ways of doing it. Both are very effective. Both work perfectly. And then last tip, have fun, guys. <laughs> Just have fun. Try new things, you know. Try new ideas. Don't be afraid to fail and do what makes you smile because that's why we craft, right? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had so, so much fun making this for you. If you liked it, please subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell for future notifications. And one more tip. Have a blessed and wonderful week. I love y'all. Bye, y'all.